Hey folks, welcome back to another Civilization 6 video, and in this video we'll be playing with Monopolies and Corporations mode, and we're hoping to take a deeper look into how to decide which industries to place in which cities. So we'll be playing with the Aztecs because Montezuma loves luxuries, and their units receive a combat strength bonus for each different luxury resource improved in Aztec lands, so that gives us a good excuse to hoard up some of those luxury resources. And that will give us an early start on hopefully getting some cities that have good placement for industries. So we'll be playing on Deity difficulty with standard game speed. And we're going to be playing on a Terra map with Heroes and Legends mode on, Monopolies and Corporations mode on, and Secret Societies on. So I've set this to 10 city states and then the default 5 AI players. I clicked off a couple of city states that I don't really like that are happen to be on top of the list of COD. Our Mog and Cardiff are checked off. And then I don't normally use the Natural Wonder Selector, but I decided to go ahead and pick four wonders for this game because I thought it would be sort of fun given the new district with the Preserve and just some things that we could do. So with the Bermuda Triangle, that's just because I'm desperately hoping to get a map at some point where you have workable Bermuda Triangle tiles. The Fountain of Youth could be fun for some Aztec gameplay for early healing on your Evil Warriors. Aluru, just because the desert needs some love, and it gives additional appeal. And then uh, Zangi Danksha is uh, there because it gives great merchant points, which uh, helps out in getting corporations. Well, it helps out in getting uh, great merchants for upgrading. So we are ready to go ahead and get set, and let's hope that this game is agreeable. So let's see what we've got here. Now the Aztecs start with their unique unit, so that gives you an immediate 4 era score boost. So we have 4 of the 25 that we would need for a Golden Age, or 4 of the 11 that we would need to avoid a Dark Age. So uh, that's a nice little bonus for civilizations that start with their unique unit. Now, with this starting spot, we are on a floodplains. If you hit the 4 button, you can see the settler layout there. Or, I guess, alternatively, you could just click the settler. Well, usually, you can click the settler. But, at any anyway, the, uh, the floodplains here is not optimal, in my opinion, because you can damage your population with the flood. So, we're going to go ahead and move over, probably, to this tile, because it's the hills tile. It should retain that production and food of 2 and 2, even if we remove the rainforest. So, we've got one diamond source and one truffle source here. So for monopolies and corporations mode, the easiest way to remember what type of industry bonus these luxuries give for most of the luxury types is by what type of additional yield they give. So you can tell that these are both additional gold yield. So if you were to build an industry on top of them, that would give you the plus to gold yield in your city overall. So let's go ahead and move our settler over. So we are going to get the sailing boost as well, and we will have the maximum housing because we're still along the river there. And let's bring our warrior over here to explore. So we've lost one turn to move off of that floodplains, and we'll go ahead and settle here. We're going to lose the rainforest. We'll get our sailing boost, and as you can see, we'll still have the two and two for four total in the city, and then we'll have this nice square here hex I should say and then let's go ahead and start with animal husbandry because that will allow us to build a camp here and a pasture here as well as reveal any horse sources on the map and then let's go ahead and continue exploring with our eagle warrior there and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to start build even though we have the special unit we're going to start with a slinger so that we can find hopefully a nearby barbarian camp and then we will hopefully get the archery boost so that is how we are going to get started with our build so we're going to explore here by coming back down this way because the rainforest will slow up our movement so we're going to want to see what is down this way it moves a little faster so we've got a tribal village right here and then a source of ivory right here so there's no good way offhand for remembering necessarily the 
military bonuses, but ivory does give a, a military production bonus if you put an industry on top of it. So that is going to be our second option besides gold. And I guess you could remember it because like the tusks and stuff could be used as, as weaponry. I, I think they're sort of themed along that way. But we're going to come over here and we're going to meet Kublai Khan here. And he seems to be leading Mongolia rather than China here. So since we're on deity, he's got a plethora of troops, but we're going to go ahead and snag this from him. And we're going to get the Boyd Singers unlock, which was going to give us one governor title. Now, a lot of times I like to save my governor title until I meet a city state so I can assign Amani and start unlocking heroes. But I've found that I, ha I have a tendency to hold on to my governor, governor titles too long. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and immediately appoint Pingala to start getting the bonus to culture and science, which isn't going to be very much because I barely generate any culture and science right now in this city, but it's going to be an immediate bo bonus as opposed to waiting to see whether I discover a city-state. Now, had I run into a city-state first, obviously I would have assigned Imani instead, but that was not the case here. Now, I don't know offhand what Kublai Khan's agenda preferences are, but for this play, I don't really care that much because I'm not going to be sending a delegation here because I'm probably going to be trying to get war early. Uh, Pax Mongolica, so he likes strong military and high gold yield per turn, and then he's got a hidden agenda, uh, as all leaders do. So with the Aztecs, obviously, because their special unit has a chance of capturing other military units and turning them into builders, you really are sort of forced into an early aggression game if you really want to capitalize on the Aztecs advantages so no point in sending a delegation here so right now obviously I'm not going to just hop in here with my eagle warrior and start um, a 3v1 fight here so we can see they have not gotten their second settler out yet and they've got a barbarian down here nearby. So there is no point really in coming up here to try and block this settler because they only have to they only have to settle uh, more than three spaces away. So if I come up here, he's just going to move e either way. And well, if I go all the way up here, it would actually delay him one turn because he would have to either. Well, no, he'd probably move this way to settle it. So, but I actually. Do I want him to move that way and settle it? I'm probably just going to go ahead and let him settle it where he wants to settle it because I want to try and get more of the map revealed down here. So let's go ahead and do that. So from the looks of the map layout, you can see the water around the edges here. It looks like we are on some type of peninsula of this continent. Now remember we played a Terra map so there should be two separate continents, one large and one small, and all of the sieves should start on the large continent. So with all this water surrounded here, it looks like that we're probably on a piece of the large continent that's connected somewhere here. So we're going to come down here. It could be connected in either direction. I'm not going to do the map pin thing where you can sort of see where you are on the map, but we'll just go ahead and explore. So since the river is butting up against this way, we're just going to go ahead and take the one tile move in this direction. And now we have revealed gypsum. So gypsum is a luxury resource that provides a bonus of 30% production towards buildings in a city if you have an industry on top of it. And that's one of only two resources that has that bonus along with marble. So that is our third option. So our three industry options right now are gold, buildings, and military. Now we can see that they did settle up here along this river and coast here. And we've got our slinger now. And one turn till we have Pingala. Now, a lot of times you might select Eagle Warrior here a second and go really aggressive. The problem is with going Eagle Warrior and then just going right into attack 
is that you could run into some loyalty issues in holding the city. So I actually like to go with Settler second and then start turning out the Eagle Warriors if you're the Aztec because it'll be easier to hold the loyalty pressure with the second city pressuring that loyalty. So let's go ahead and come down and see if we can't uh, explore this and converge these two units together in case there's a barbarian camp in this area, which there is. Now I will probably not run down here and hit this right away because I'm not down here with my slinger. So let's go over here and see if we can't get them to come out a little bit that way. They'll probably chase me, which they did. And then I will want to move to a tile that has a better defense modifier. This one has six, so we'll move along there. And there's a tribal village there as well. So let's come down with our slinger and see if we can't obtain that. So it looks like Mongolia is coming down, but it looks like that we have position on the tribal village. So we narrowly avoided getting hit by a flood and damage. That would have been bad. So we're going to let um, Mongolia fight there some more, actually. So I'm just going to stand up there in the woods and hope to rush in and get the last hit, actually. So let's see if that will work. If there are no um, it's not it. exactly what we planned. So... Let's see, this should be another 6 defense tile, which it is. So this one should all probably only 3 defense. So let's move our slinger onto this 6 defense tile. And then we will go ahead and, since we're at full health, we'll go ahead and attack here with the Eagle Warrior. And then let's go ahead and start on our second research. So unfortunately we didn't reveal any horses with animal husbandry, so we don't have any horses. Now, we're hoping to get a kill with the Slinger to get the Archery Boost, but we don't know if we're going to or not. Now, the Great Bath would be good here, except for the fact that the, um, the AI usually builds that very, very quickly if they have access to a Floodplains tile. So, I'm probably not going to worry too much about getting the Great Bath. So, that leaves Mining which is probably the best choice here because then I can improve this tile as well and also chop these if need be. So let's go ahead and keep clicking the governor screen for no reason whatsoever because I'm just clicking randomly while I'm talking and go ahead and actually select mining here. So we've got eight more turns until our settlers complete and what happened to our Mongolian friends helping there? Thought they were going to help us there. So what we're probably going to do actually is fall back here because I don't want to lose the Aztec warrior. So we're going to fall back behind the river here. And then from here I will attack because they can't go two spaces and attack me here. Because they're not only the one guy will be able to attack the slinger. And this one actually positioned him. Oh, that was very nice. He just walked in the floodplains and got damaged. Unfortunately, I can't reach him. So let's go ahead and get our archery boost so that's nice I think we might actually switch over to that now that we know that we have the boost for sure and then let's go ahead and so you heal more if you're within your own borders but if I heal in place here I've not injured that much so I would start healing immediately on this next turn so I think we'll do that and we'll see what happens because we want to try and get down here as quickly as we can because we ha have this village here and we don't want Mongolia to get it. So let's go ahead and oh, that's not going to be quite enough. But I can move down here and he can't run and go. Oh, these yuck. All right, so that's not exactly what we planned on there. Um, so let's move down here he's not going to heal this turn but At his best. and i think he has a little less defense so i will kill him there with that so let's go ahead and and ping this slinger and i should be able to kill him because he was on a six defense tile and now he's only on a three defense tile so now i'm actually able to get that kill with the aztec war or the eagle warrior there and then let's go ahead and click on to foreign trade four more turns until we get our settler, and because I'm dumb, um, 
So what I should have done was fill this policy slot first so that I got extra combat strength versus barbarians before I did those attacks. So uh, don't do what I did there and attack first. And then we want to get our Pantheon, so let's go ahead and slot God King in there. Now, I did not notice previously here that we did reveal another diamond source here. Unfortunately, it's four tiles away, so those can't be worked within the same city to get access to that industry. So, a little bit unfortunate there. Um, as are these slingers being a little bit unfortunate here. So if I fall back here, they can't advance up on me and attack at the same time. Unfortunately, they are just keep blocking this tribal village out, so that's not great. But let's see. Hopefully, I'm still going to beat Mongolia to it. So this is good because I should be able to ping this guy here and then finish him off with the Eagle Warrior here. Hopefully not exposing myself to anything. It doesn't look like it. So we should be good there. Then we can heal off the promotion on the Slinger. As much as I'd like to advance up and get this, I don't know. I don't have any visibility here, so I am going to heal my Eagle Warrior. Because I can't risk losing him. And then we'll heal the Slinger as well. And then we have one turn until we grow here, and one turn until we get our Settler. Then once we have that Settler out, we are going to start working on getting some Eagle Warriors out. Now, if we look here, these are all floodplains, so we don't want to settle on the floodplain. This is going to lack fresh water. And as far as we can tell, there's no other luxury other than this one. So I think the best bet is probably to come up along this way. That'll give us good pressure on loyalty for any city that Mongolia might forward settle up in that direction. So hopefully we can safely move over this way and actually get the boost for foreign trades. So that's nice. And then we should be able to... Move up and grab this, which will give us the boost for the wheel. And then we will continue moving up along here. So, looks like we're still going to get the clear on this camp. It's hard to tell. Let me see. So I feel like if I, if I attack the scout here, we're probably just going to take damage for no reason. So I think it's probably better to, to move up one here and then go ahead and attack the spear warrior here hopefully that i don't get like a, a counter attack death here i don't think i should though based upon what's left uh, now i definitely shouldn't now that mongolia ran in there um now this is okay so that's one movement cost and this is also one movement cost so i should be able to slide yeah this way and still sometimes it's hard to tell with the meter whether or not you're actually going to get a um a kill or not whether or not it's all completely uh threaded out there so that gives me the kill and also unlocks sanguine pact there uh unfortunately i did already use our governor title here so we're stuck with that we did get a little boost from pingal instead of 1.5 we're getting 1.8 i think there um and are we getting any modifiers from happiness or anything here? No, just regular old um, production value there. So we come over here, and I think we'll probably just settle right here along this lake. And now, and actually, if we settle there, that should. So I'm going to actually, oops. I have a bad habit of never... Um, never setting these up because I don't know but then I, I feel like that there it's the uh, the right thing to do like it's the smarter thing to do so let's go ahead and set this up so what we want to do is set this up so that we know that this is a potential spot that we want to have our 
industrial zone complex. So the aqueducts will give a bonus to industrial zones. So if we build this way, now the only reason I don't like this is because it's taking up two floodplains tiles. So like if these get up, these get boosted more, we might scrap this idea depending on how often this floods. Because if we cover those up, obviously, then instead of getting fertility, we'll just get damaged districts. So, uh, but that is a potential, potential thing we could do right there. So, we did pretty well on this. We beat Mongolia to the village and to the barbarian encampment. So, that's a decent start. Man, now we've got Mexico you. City revealed over there. And we'll go ahead and get our second settlement down. Now, this isn't like a great spot, but we don't have, I don't think we have a lot of other choice. Like, we could move farther over here, but I don't necessarily know what's over here. It gives us access to water, the water mill if we move farther over, but then we don't have this set up for uh, an industrial zone complex. So, I think it might, it's probably better to have cities closer together here in this case, I think. Let's see, is it a woods and a thing? I think, yeah, I think we're gonna, because we don't want, I don't wanna spend extra turns. I wanna start getting my, getting my things out. So let's go ahead and now we'll start working on mining and we need to get mining because we want to improve both of these resources to give us the bonus to uh, our attack. And actually, speaking of improving, probably should have done, take care of some things that we should have done here. So we should have gotten this builder out, start getting the improvements out. And the other thing we should do is we should denounce Mongolia. And the reason for that is, is because we're going to generate grievances now. And then these will deteriorate because we aren't at war. So you would generate 150 for declaring a surprise war, you generate 25 for denouncing and 100 for a formal war. So it makes it easier to hold cities that you've taken if you generate fewer grievances. So that's the reason that we are doing that. So let's go ahead and heal here and heal here and then We'll progress on to the next turn. So they've got, they're doing the same thing. And now we've got our guy out here and we'll approve this source. So we didn't check to see what we we're working here. So this looks to be an agreeable. Well, actually, we want to grow faster. So let's go ahead and work that one instead. And over here, that's what we want to be working. So. We are set, and we are generating our Eagle Warrior uh, relatively fast here. So let's get our camp out. So that's a nice uh, nice five gold off of that slot. Go ahead and ping this guy. And then it looks like we are set there. And we've met Congo. So Congo likes you to spread his religion to them because they can't found their own religion. So that's one less competitor for getting a religion, so that is good. Fewer competition for great profits. Two more turns till mining, which will coincide to getting over here and improving that resource. And then we've got two more turns till our ego warrior. And then we'll probably move in to launch an offensive on Mongolia at that point. So let's go ahead and get over here and We've got our Eagle Warrior. Who deserves more crevasse? And we finished dust. mining. And foreign trade. So now since we've finished foreign trade, let's go ahead and start into early empire. And then So we don't have our Pantheon, so we're not gonna stop that swap that, and we're not producing naval units, so we're not gonna swap that. So let's go ahead and select what we want. And this is sort of a, a difficult choice here because we have, like we'd like to establish a religion, but we don't have any natural wonder discovered. Surprisingly, I don't think the Great Bath has been built yet, but by the time that we get a round to 
finishing pottery. I just, I don't think that we have a shot at that. We could try and get masonry, but there doesn't seem to be anywhere to get a masonry boost. It would be nice because we could build a pyramid. So right now we don't have anything unlocked where we can build a district. So I think we're going to go with bronze working here. And then let's go ahead and start building an archer here. Because archers are still like, you know, like your best form of damage because you don't take any damage in return. And then now we have two eagle warriors for hopefully getting some workers off of attacking Mongolia. So let's go ahead and approve this. And now our warriors... If we hover over a battle, we should see they have two per luxury attack. So plus two, one per luxury, and we have two improved luxuries. So we have a significant advantage, even though the AI gets four to their base strength. We are at 37. So that is nice. Let's go ahead and move in and see what they are doing here. And we'll bring our eagle warrior over here. And we have archers coming out at both spots. We're not changing that. And then take a look over here. Take a look, see. We'll come along a long way with our slinger. And then with this one, we'll probably improve this farm over here. And that will give us the craftsmanship boost. I don't really have time to take a detour over there and explore. I wish I did. But we don't. We are focused on attacking Mongolia here. So let's see. Come up this way and this way. And they've got some defenses in place, which I guess is expected because they have a lot more troops. Go ahead and improve this, and that will give us the craftsmanship boost and the irrigation boost. So let's go ahead and finish craftsmanship up here and by finish I mean start and then we'll move our eagle warrior down there now what we don't want to do is move this guy like too far out of our borders until we're ready because they will sort of prompt us to like like declare war if we are gathering too many guys by their, their borders so we want to do some reconnaissance here while they have their borders down still before they get early empire so we're going to stay within our borders so we might have actually had some time to explore that and they've got quite a few guys in here so i don't know if we are really in a good position to attack the good thing is, is the city is that they settled on the other side of the river here because they couldn't settle it over here so that is a more vulnerable position as far as being able to defend it so go ahead and explore over this way a little. There's the great bath build. See, it's uh, relatively uh, quick that the AI gets that great bath build. So, so they due to the no, the amount of defenses they have, like there's not a great time to launch an attack. So we're just gonna re recon back here, and we'll we'll give them some space to see what they're gonna do with that that settler see if they move up out here to settle which will give us another opportunity there so now the question is, is do we want to build another archer here or do we want to get our trader in place because the trader will help us with growth so let's go ahead and Let's go ahead and do the trader because we're not quite ready to launch an attack yet and that will speed up our growth a little and then yeah i must have got a builder off of one of those tribal villages because i don't recall i have oh no i bought it that's right okay that's what happened I was like where did i get that builder from because i didn't don't recall building a builder so that settler is still just hanging out there so that's interesting I don't know what he's doing with it. Sometimes the AI straggles a little bit on what they're doing with their settler. But we'll just continue. So they're sort of hemmed in here. So I'm not sure why they're just hanging out with that settler. That, that is actually, very interesting, actually. 
I don't really like how I'm leaving my Eagle Warrior over by the, himself exposed in case they decide to declare war, because they could, because I denounced them, so that is interesting. They're still not mobilizing that settler, though. I've got some more troops over here. And we'll bring our archer down here. I guess we'll explore this way since they aren't... This is odd. They don't usually clutter way up by their own borders like this. It could be because I actually remember to denounce this time. A lot of times I forget to, and I think maybe, like when you denounce them, they, pop, they get a little bit more defensive. So we'll continue to stay in our own borders up here because I don't want to trigger that forced war declaration here. Now they're they're coming out a bit here, so let's see. Nope, still just hanging out there with the settler. That's interesting. All right, so they've got four warriors. There's not a lot of good defense terrain. I'll have to bring this Aztec warrior back up to this side if I want to have a good defense position, because I can't really wait any longer. Like the longer you wait here with the Aztecs, the like the worse off you're going to be. So we're just going to have to to play the hand that we've been given here and they are they're they're turtling up so we have to respond in kind here and let's see so we need to get over here in good position and then actually what we can do is we can buy a tile out here and forward, forward put an encampment up here in either direction, actually, behind this. I hate to put it on a floodplains tile because these could get hit again, and those are some pretty decent tiles. So let's put it right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to buy that, and then we're going to place an encampment. Oops. We're going to place an encampment district up here. And since I'm in my own borders now here, I can move one more unit out here. And they have archers now as well. So this will be an interesting little battle here. Over here, we're going to continue to turn out... Uh, actually, I think I'm going to take... Yeah, one more archer. And then over here, if we send one to Mexico City... That will give us the, the trade route quest. And we'll get a new quest at the beginning of the next era. So as much as I'd like to get the, 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 the internal trade route would obviously be most optimal, I think, with the food and production. But we're going to go ahead and get an envoy to Mexico City. And that will give us currency. We'll bring this guy back down here. Skill without too much... And so we'll probably, ah, uh, he's standing in the tile that I wanted to position in, so that's unfortunate, but it's okay. And then we're going to upgrade this guy. And now we can work probably on military tradition because that will give us the flanking bonus, even though I usually like to rush political philosophy. I think that the flanking bonus is worth it here. And we're going to be going to war here shortly. Now, oh, they're going to... I thought I had it far enough away, but... Let's go ahead. All right. We're going to go ahead and declare war. So, let's go ahead and fall back this way so that guy's not as vulnerable. And then, with this guy, take one step back, and we'll ping there, move these guys up, and I think actually if I, I can move this way and ping this other guy probably as well, so that'll work. Alright, so there is our 
opening salvo, see what happens. So they didn't manage a counterattack at all, so that's a plus. All right, so let's choose Pantheon. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose, let's see, okay, so for this, we don't have any real options here for that. There's a volcano up here, but we're not settled. And actually, there's some more luxuries up here. Uh, breathtaking appeal. It does not look like, oops, wrong key. So no immediate benefit from that and nothing that sticks out as far as wanting to take Earth Goddess. We're planning on getting builders from killing their guys. I think what we're going to go actually with is Goddess of the Hunt. We've got one camp built here. And then if we can take this city, we can get one more camp here. So I don't see anywhere else that we can build camps. But I think that other than that, River Goddess would be the other option. But we don't need the housing, it looks like, really here. And we don't have any desert floodplains. So the plus from pastures would be okay as well. But I think we're going to go with Goddess of the Hunt here. So that will give us an immediate bonus on the existing camp that we have. And then let us go. All right. So I think we can get some free workers out of this here. Hopefully. There's one free worker. And if we are fortunate here, we can get another free worker. And nope, no free worker there. All right. So we got one free worker out of the deal and we took minimal damage. And we're getting a delegation from the Congo there. So now as much as I'd like to attack this guy and get another free, uh, potential free worker here, I would leave myself a little bit exposed if I do that. But let's, let's see if we can come in here and see how exposed that would leave him. Because these are one movement tiles, so they could cut, this guy could come up and hit me. And if there's another guy here, which I can't get a view on, they could also hit me. So I don't think I want to risk that just to get a worker, because I can't afford to lose the Aztec warrior. So we're going to go ahead and not attempt to get another free worker there. But what we will do is fortify in place there. And then we'll go ahead and research. I do, I do really want to get the holy site down. But we're going to research writing since we don't know if we're going to get a boost on that holy, the holy site astrology research. So that is where we are at. So I think we are well positioned here to take the Arumkui, given the number of archer troops that we have here and the amount of defenses they have. There's one farm that we can pillage here for a heal, which is helpful. This looks like we can potentially get a free worker here which we did, move up here, and we'll ping that. Now this warrior can likely take a double attack if I move up here, move up one and see, okay, so there is a, I can't get, tri well I can get triple attack, he could move this guy up and, and So I don't know if I, I want to move up here so I could be able to pillage and heal off of that. But it's a little bit risky. We're going to go ahead and do that. I think that he can survive. And let's hope we are correct on that here. So we finished our archer here. And I think what we can do now, can we get away with building something that is not more military right here is the question so we we are the advantage right now we could try and sneak a settler out that's one option i don't think we've discovered have we discovered any heroes we have not so there the monument would be nice to get some borders 
but there's nothing immediately I need around my area here. So I think what we're gonna do actually is we're gonna build one more unit in a now. So I'd like to build a spearman to get the the down the road boost. Like I always like to build one spearman to see if I can sneak in this military tactics boost down the line because you have to do it sort of early typically because spearmen aren't that useful by the time you're trying to get that boost so you have to sort of plan ahead for it so it might not be a bad idea to get a spearman here that's going to take 65 production i could just get a settler for 110 production is the thing which might be a better option here especially since they've left this whole area open with them leaving that area open, I am gonna do. I am gonna do another settler, so hopefully we can get away with that. And then over here, I think we're gonna bring this guy over here to improve that cattle. And let's see how we did with this decision here. Okay, so it worked out. We are gonna be able to just to barely get away with that so we will pillage that for the heal there and then we'll move this builder back here and we'll move over here Move up one, leave ourselves a little exposed, but then we can hit that guy twice. And then we can move this guy up into position. Oop, I didn't mean to. You don't need to edit that tack. All right. And then we'll. We do want to clear this barbarian camp out here. I didn't even notice that spawn, actually. All right, so we still didn't lose the guy, so that's a plus. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to ping that guy. This is pretty risky because I'm leaving this guy pretty vulnerable. We'll ranged attack there. That's what I was hoping for was the promotion. Here we will heal. And bring this guy. Mm, actually, let's ping that guy. Now I'm really wishing that I had to see. We may need another melee unit here. We may just purchase another Eagle Warrior here. That might be the, the, the right play because if one of these Malis gets taken out, it's going to be a little bit difficult to take the city. Actually, I'm not that worried about the Spearman boost and I'm a little bit concerned about the health here on these guys. So let's purchase another Eagle Warrior here so that we have some more support. And we'll bring our builder back here. So let's see what happens if I lose this guy. Which I didn't. That was very fortunate. All right. So. Be less vulnerable if I take the promotion here. Now we will accidentally click that tack. All right, move this guy up. The problem is, is there's nowhere for this. There's nowhere good for this guy to retreat to because he's got. He might get killed by the spearman if I bring him down that way. So I can move one farther back, basically, and the spearman can't get to me. So let's do that. And we'll bring our worker up this way as well. 
Unfortunately, if you move and then fortify, it doesn't heal you, so that's not not ideal, but it is what it is. And we're going to build that there, get the horseback riding boost, and see how this unfolds here. Alright, so that gave us the early empire boost, because our city grew. Go ahead and hit that guy, and we'll take that out. We'll fall back with this guy, and then we should be able to. So I'm actually going to move my archer up here, so I could start pinging away at at that guy back there. And then go ahead and bring our worker back there. All right, so we have plenty of workers now, and we're working on getting another settler out. And let's see what we've got here. All right, so now they're bringing chariots out. Right, easy, easy. Let's go ahead and ping the chariot. The chariot again. Hopefully, I'm not wasting too much time here because I don't want them to get walls up. And I'm gonna wait one more heal turn there, and then over here we'll work on getting. So, let's work on currency. Although I should be prepping in case they get walls, so let's actually work on the wheel here but I still run into that problem with the masonry boost here to get that so I don't like that so we're gonna go with currency we're gonna heal our eagle warrior we are going to hang out with our builder we'll move this guy up that'll get us three air score so we still need to get ten more in six turns but I don't think it's gonna happen oh, no I want to not move though here Oh, I guess I did want to move. I, I hate that. The elevation screwed me up there. So now I'm not going to get to kill that guy. Awesome. All right, so. All right, so that's sort of irritating because I was planning on killing that guy. All right, well, I'll get to kill him now anyway. Uh, so let's go ahead and. Move this guy up. I guess we're just going to exchange volleys here. Um, I don't know why I'm just sitting here with the builder when I could have been building that. That was, I think I just was spacing out there. All right, so got that. We're going to move, oh, we didn't mean to move the builder. Move this builder away, and we'll go ahead and ping that. All right, so let's see if he returns fire with the archer. Hello, Spain. How are you? Awful smiley there. All right, uh, so he got the archer of the city, which sort of sucks because now he can hit me without taking damage. But I do have my flanking bonus now for military tradition, so that helps. So let's go ahead and start working on early empire. This builder is going to hang out here. And we're going to move. Archer up that way. Oh, actually this builder can add production to this district. I almost forgot about that. So he's definitely doing that. And then we will... Ranged attack there. Alright, so now I am going to start using this warrior because now that they have an archer in there, so. Up there. It looks like we have this pretty much under control here, though. I shouldn't have said that, like famous last words there. Alright. And this guy is going to. 
scout out that way a little bit. Uh, no. So let's see what our our grievance status is here. Oh, got our district built. So they have 150 against us. Now if we look at this, so we had 25 and that all went away before we declared war. So we got... Oh, you know what sort of sucks is because they forced me to declare the war, that counted as a surprise war. But if had they not done that, then I would have gotten more grievances for breaking my promise. So it really didn't matter. That's why you don't want to tr trigger that. So we're going to go ahead and, and build our barracks here because we have time to do so and this is under control. And then let's go ahead and And I want to position this so I can sort of steal that settler. So let me, I don't think I can though, really. Like, if I position in that way, that's not going to work. So let's go ahead and, all right. So we've taken that city, taken a worker. We're going to keep the city. And now if we take a look, falling 10.1, so let's go ahead and move Pingala over. So we should just be falling by 2 now, 2.1. So that gives us a little bit of time to either to get some more population here. And I think I should get some pressure from the settlers. So I'm really glad I went with settler there. We don't have enough to buy a monument. So I'm not going to start building a monument because I want to see if I can just buy it and add the extra loyalty there. We will move up there and these guys have an available level up now the question is if I do I want to use it right now or use it to heal I think I'm gonna save it for a heal so let's go ahead and oh yes nice I forgot because I own the city now I can cut through it and take that settler so that was really good I, for... I completely forgot about that so that's uh that's huge actually so now we've got them hemmed in here and now the eagle warrior is going to heal off of his promotion here so let's move the archer up move the eagle warrior up and then we will heal him maybe to defend against ranged attacks actually so that we well, actually, they're probably going to range attack back on my archers and not the eagle warrior. So let's go ahead and and take the the normal one here. Now we're going to need to get a guy a garrisoned in here because we're getting a loyalty loss there. So let's see. We can't reach in with any of these guys. So let's back this one up and heal. This builder can come over here and repair that and then we'll build this here which will give us more boost to our attack and as well as giving us um the amenity so that's plus so let's sneak out here and see if we can explore without getting busted on that so we're going to get one more turn until we get our settler there And one more turn till the ancient era ends. So I think now because we actually lost population there though, falling 2.8 instead of 2.1 because they didn't grow any population there. So let's see. So what we need to do somehow is save off that loyalty loss here. So that amenity apparently did not do it. Oh yeah, actually we're down to 0.2 now because were we short on amenities before I, I guess maybe we were i thought we had two already we had the truffles and the diamonds and the ivory so that should be three this is telling us two okay that's interesting all right so now over here we can build a Probably a campus, but we'll have to 
well actually I don't want to I want to be able to purchase a monument there so I want to save my money and I, so I don't want to purchase a tile to get the campus quite yet so that leaves us with a granary for housing we could we are getting culture very slow so let's go ahead and build a monument here and then with this one here we're at three of five on housing so let's go ahead and build another house right here and then we'll move that up there and move this up move this guy up and this guy up and we can settle over in this direction And this archer we will move up as well. This one we're going to need to leave there. And I think we can bring this guy up. All right, so we should be set here. Almost getting there. All right, and now we are almost set still. All right, so here we go. Where did those two dudes come from? <laughs> They're like late to the party there. All right, so we hit a normal era. Uh, Kublai Khan's in a dark age, so he actually that really helps because he's not going to be pushing back so much loyalty pressure. So the other civilizations that we met are in a golden age because I guess they aren't busy fighting in their area. So am I going to get a religion is the question. So Mongolia is not, so only Spain is getting, so Spain and somebody else has a great profit. So the two that have great profit points already have gotten it. If I eliminate Mongolia and Congo can't get one, that means I'm guaranteed to get one of the four great profits. So that's uh, excellent. So the question is, is um, am I going to get a holy site out and convert cities before the end of this uh, era? So I don't have a lot of low-hanging fruit on these boosts left. I hit most of these. And that as well so I think the options are monumentality and I can actually build districts fairly fast because of Montezuma's special ability which gives the builder 20% of the original district cost but I'd have to build twice as many districts as converting cities so let's go ahead and go with Exodus the Evangelist and then we're gonna bring our Eagle Warrior over here I'm going to fall back slightly this way. And now, because they are in a dark age, I don't have to worry about that pressure as much. Because they are now only falling by 0.3 even without a garrison unit. So I can afford to bring this guy out here. Let's go ahead and... We'll ping that guy twice and then see if we can get a free worker, which we did not. And there, and then we will bring this guy up. And is there something for this worker to do over here? Yeah, there's a milk there too. And with this one, let's go ahead and now that I don't have to worry about that monument or actually this monument down here. We're going to try and work on getting that campus over here. So let's see. I don't want to settle those floodplains really. So probably over here by that volcano and the gypsum. And then down here, probably this other gypsum. All right. And this guy apparently is just going to come in here to die. So let's go ahead and... Ah, oh, no free worker, come on. So, oops. Let me see if I can adjust my positioning here. And 
So I can always heal myself off this farm, so I'm just going to start going ahead and attacking. And then come over here, build this pasture. I'm not sure what this guy is doing. Alright, and then this guy's coming up this way. Yes, they are celebrating my rule because we're getting rid of these pesky Mongols. And then we'll ping that there. Move up, ping. And then. Yeah, uh, let's pillage this for health. All right. And then this guy will come up here. Looks fairly barbarian free over here. And we're hopefully not running into any barbarians up here. Money. All right. So now let's go ahead and I guess we're not going to discover a natural wonder, but I don't want to get not get or get too behind on getting actually our religion out. Then let's work on state workforce. And over here we can work on getting our campus where we want it here. So let's get. So the other strategy is that we go here instead of trying to get a campus right now we could if we could get enough arrow points we could hit a golden age and then get uh science off of our commercial hub adjacency bonus so we could go that route but that relies on getting a golden age which is sort of risky as opposed to just building a campus now but it's cheap let's see so this is not a good i mean i have river adjacency but the preference obviously is to get river and harbor adjacency so let's go ahead and i can't reach any good spots for the campus really so i guess i can just build it here that'll give us that'll give us potential for university sancor so Go ahead and do that. Gives us one adjacency at least. It's better than zero. And let's see. Probably, I'd like to get Magnus. And I would like to get Pangala promotion. So. Let's move Pingala over to where the campus is going to be, and then in five turns when he gets there, we'll decide on giving him that promotion or not. Uh, we can get rid of the Plus versus Barbarians card that's been in there for way too long, apparently. I don't know when the last time I had an opportunity to change that was. But let's go ahead and get the Plus to Cities, and then you don't even need the Plus to Loyalty at this point, so let's go ahead and get the a gogi and then we'll move our eagle warrior up ping the city we'll ping the city again and we'll ping the city one more time and then we will wipe out mongolia so there's five air score and recorded history which means we have two campuses now because they built two campuses these two so that's nice so i actually didn't even really need this third campus over here um so i could actually I do need to lock in a price anyway so i have the two campuses already i could build a commercial hub right here 
it would be a bad spot for it. Let's go ahead and do actually I'm gonna that's gonna grow in one turn anyway here. So or it must have grown in another direction because it said it was gonna grow in one turn before there. So alright, let's go ahead and repair these things up here. I still have that one governor title. And we will rest up here. Come over here. I'm gonna build that iron mine. Rest with this archer. And oh yeah, we still have another city to make over here. So let's go ahead and cross this river. And we'll come down here. And we'll hang out there. Bring him over. And this is probably a good spot to stop for now since the video is getting sort of long. But so 57 turns is not too bad to clear out this peninsula and get rid of Mongolia. So uh, we've got a nice setup here. Now we have access to horses, which we did not have before. We have access to this iron. And we have one, two, three gypsum sources, which is plus two buildings, which can be an okay industry to build up. We only have one ivory source, which is the military, um, the military source, and then two different single sources of, actually three, if we have this one, of um, plus to gold. So, and you can also, if you hit this map search button, so like just in case I'm missing anything, you can see one result, it's just there. But like if I were to type in gypsum, which I know there's more, we can cycle through those and see everywhere we have it on the map. If you type in that map search, you can type in any resource that you want there. And that way, if there's once you're once you get more of the map explored, that can be pretty useful. So uh, at any rate, that is where we are at. We are playing on deity on a Terra map and trying to see if we can set up some good industries. We've got to okay spot for it. I wish we'd had some culture or science um, luxuries, but it doesn't look like we've been afforded that bonus. So uh, at any rate, thanks for watching and tune in and we will pick up on this playthrough on our next video.